Well, hello everyone. Um, welcome again to the Prop Dog Friday Live uh, and uh, a big thank you from all the staff here once again for joining us. We really appreciate the fact you take the time out of the day to come and join us to watch us idiots just sit here and talk crap all day. So uh, we really do appreciate that because without you guys we are nothing. So uh, as always we are here for you so if there's anything you want to see please do ask us. I know a lot of you have sent questions in in advance which we'll all answer as we go through the video. Any questions you have, please do ask them, but don't forget, if we don't get back to you, post them again. I, I always go home and, and watch the live again afterwards, and I realize there's questions there that we somehow missed, so um, we don't always get to see them. So do ask your question again if we don't answer it. And uh, as always, if you wanna look around anything, please do. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna get you ready on here. Um, uh, have we got anyone joining us so far? Let me just get you on ready here, because guys, you are not, on here so Dean has now left us uh, and Dean was more of our IT guru he used to deal with all this um, so uh, bear with me I'm just an old fart who's struggling to uh, to get on my computer still so um, there we go where are we uh, prop log live we should be up here any minute uh, there we are now how do we get that on there there we go right okay anyone joined ah a few people uh, Jake hello um, uh, good to see you um, now I always get confused with um, Jake because we do have Jake two Jake Allens but uh, Jake if you were the one who was expecting to top it hopefully you've got your top it Savant, if you're the other Savant, Jake Savant. thank you I oh, sorry the Savant yeah so <laughs> Jake if you have your top it now excellent apologies for the, the mix up the other Jake if you've got Jake's top it and you send it to him thank you for that so I don't know whichever one's watching but yeah the real uh, Jake but Allen, thank you yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for that, and uh, let's get Bobo out as well because Bobo likes to join us on the uh, the lives. Come Bobo, up, Bobo. you got a big fan group, Bobo. So everyone likes to watch you. you can hey, stand up there. And everyone can say hello to Bobs. Right. So uh, guys, um, any questions? Uh, uh, Mike Farrell, hello, mate. Blast of the past. I hope you are well. Uh, Gabo, I say hello there. Hello, Charlie. Uh, Jim, Jim, Simon, Alan, and James. It's like a, a nursery rhyme, isn't it? So uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like Trump. So, yeah. Hello, uh, hello, guys. Hello, hello. Right. So, um, I'll check out. I'm the Jake you sent uh, sent it to. No worries for posting it on. Oh, no, you're that Jake. Uh, appreciate that, Jake. Save you. Uh, yeah, it's very confusing. I mean, we might expect two John Smiths, but Jake Allen. It's a kind of name you don't expect to have two of. But uh, obviously, a very popular name. So, uh, hello, Michael Cooley. Uh, how are you? Um, uh, no doubt, Michael. My mind reading. Uh, you're going to ask a question about kids magic. Uh, maybe we can answer that later on. He's not so, he's um, asked a different question. Has he? Yeah. Oh, is he? Oh, good. Yes. Oh, good. Um, right, Mike Bent, hello. Um, hello, hello. Hello, Christopher. Hello, Mark. Right, so, uh, yeah, as we said, Dean has now sadly left us. He's gone on to bigger and better things. He's now part of uh, 4MG. So, well, what are you doing? What are you after? What do you want to do? Go on, stand there. Wait there. Uh, we do have a new member of staff, Cash, who has joined, but he's unfortunately not here today. He's away at a funeral. So, uh, we'll introduce Cash properly next week and he can say a little bit about himself and, and say hello. So, uh, right, so while we're waiting for some questions to come through, uh, we're going to go through some of the questions that have been asked previously. Mm -hmm. So, uh, far away. Uh, so, first of all, from Mr. Scott Perry, what's our favourite recommended way to produce a glass of liquid, specifically not a bottle? A glass of liquid, right. So there are several different ways. So there are shot glass productions. Um, sure Shot. Uh, yeah, Sure Shot by Bill Abbott is a yeah. great one. There's a yeah, few really of them good. out there. I used to do one. If you ever, if you Google uh, Dave Bonsall glass routine, you'll see an old YouTube video of me years ago where I produced uh, a full glass of wine and a wine bottle afterwards. And what I used for that was a, basically uh, the principle you use for producing a dove. So it's a, a pocket that's about... Uh, so about that, so I'm going to use one of my extreme burn press, uh, extreme <laughs> burn presser uh, pocket sizes over there. So it's a pocket about that big, uh, and it's made of black satin, satin because it's nice and uh, a nice sheen on it. Uh, but what I found is uh, having a glass stem, the actual uh, bottom part, bottom part. This part here would catch sometimes coming out. So what I did, uh, I found a clear tube and I cut two strips out. So we kind of had a, a curved strip there and a curved strip the other side, which allowed that to glide through without catching the material and kind of just pulling it along like that. Um, so yeah, uh, that was in there. Um, and I'd had a cap on it. It was actually a champagne glass, not a wine glass. I had a cap, a little plastic cap. Uh, I got that from a billiard ball uh, set, but you can find all kinds of little rubber caps or even a condom works. Um, 
bit of balloon works, yeah. You've got to have a big balloon though to be able to get around one. But a condom works, but then you've got to get uh, all the um, the lube off it. So give it a good wash with uh, very liquid. Tie a knot on the condom, and that gives you something to put a little loop through. So on a dove, if you don't know about a dove production, um, you, you'll have basically a, a loop coming out here. So a bit of line, uh, and by loop I mean just like a, a little um, a loop on the end of the line. Um, and we used to actually uh, hair dryer it so it becomes flexible, bend it out a little bit, let it cool so you've got something cool like there and you could just pull it like that and pull something out. So then you can use a silk to produce it into your hand. But uh, that's the way I found we worked really, really well with champagne glasses, wine glasses. Um, and if you check out Salverno, type in Salverno glass routine. Salverno was an amazing Polish magician, so S-A-L-V-A-N-O, uh, one of my favourite all-time magicians. He does the most insanely beautiful routine with a whole lot of glasses. The, the table's full of glasses here, there and everywhere, and he uses the same sort of dove production um, uh, method uh, that I use. In fact, I probably was inspired by him. I don't remember how I come up with it. I probably copied him or something, but uh, yeah. So that's my favourite ways of producing a wine bottle. I hope that, oh, sorry, a glass. <laughs> A wine glass or a glass, other than a, um, a, 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 a was it other than a other than a bottle, other so than a bottle, yeah, yeah. So uh, we, I hope that helps, Scott. Do we sell any anything for larger glasses rather than just no? Shots? There's nothing really out there. No, I mean uh, your best bet is basically uh, if you don't want to do shot glasses, uh, drop me an email and I'll describe a proper setup and everything. If you want to try my one, but watch my glass and bottle routine and watch Salerno. And if you want to do the same thing, uh, email us and I'll, I'll give you a full description of, of, of what you need to do and how to build it and everything like that. So uh, there we go. Right. Okay. Um, are you in a hurry to go? I mean, do you, okay, well, we've got a special guest over there, uh, royalty, uh, magical royalty. Um, Bobo. Uh, yeah, Bobo. Um, he's going to talk about something in a minute. Um, so, uh, uh, Somebody will no doubt mention um, Gary James's Prosecco that's recently come out. Uh, we haven't ooh, got it, I so, I, so I can't talk about it, but that is... Uh, Few people have said it's, it's very good, so maybe we need so to look at it. What is it? I don't know. It's just a way of producing a glass of full glass of prosecco. Oh, okay. So we Boom. don't we don't there have it go. at the moment, but um, if Scott, Scott would like one, yep. I'm sure we could get one in. Awesome, wonderful. Okay, uh, next question. Let's see if there's any on here. Yeah. So, uh, oh, hello, Christopher Cowell. Um, uh, right, Brian Robson. Hello. He says, "What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen sparrow?" Uh, unladen is around about 34 meters per second. I mean, depends what you know. What, what, what I mean by unladen, I mean, you know, is he is he on steroids? Is he is he on speed? Is he just regularly flying leisurely? Is he going with the air current? I mean, you need to be more specific about this. What about uh, Brian? two so, um, tied together with a twine of creeper? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, you've seen Top Gun, haven't you? When when the two planes and one turns upside down, he gives the other one the bird. I mean, you yeah. might have a bird flying upside down above another bird, and that that will affect the, the velocity as well. And that's so, before yeah. the coconut yeah. gets involved. Okay, so right, okay. Um, uh, Mark Ward, hello. Uh, Mike Bent, hello. Good afternoon. Uh, right, Justin Soul, afternoon, chaps. Place an order for essentials yesterday afternoon. It touched down today, ten ten as always. Ten out of ten as always. Thank you very much. Uh, you're most welcome. Uh, Charlie Robinson says, get Bobo to do a trick. Um, okay, give me two secs. Cheers, Dave. Uh, yeah, so Bo before Bobo's performance, the Pièce de Résistance. Um, ah, yes, we've had a question from Michael, uh, sorry, Mitchell Melody. Very, crap, that's a great name for a singer. Uh, they say, the simplest magic performed by an actor can be made to look like the best magic. Any comments regarding this? So basically, actors can be really good magicians because they act the part. What, what's your theory? Crap. I know terrible, terrible um, uh, actors um, who are terrible at magicians. I know good actors that are terrible at magic. I know vice versa. I know great magicians that are terrible at acting. Um, it's not so much about acting, it's about entertainment. You're an entertainer first and foremost. Magic is just a vehicle to entertain. So um, you can be a really bad magician and do a really good magic trick, um, uh, or well, not a good magic trick, you can do a really great performance just by being either funny, just by being likeable, amicable, really. So I don't think it's about acting. I, I think it's just more about people have to like you. I mean, the old saying, if they like you, they like the magic. I think that's so true. You know, if you, if you come on with a big smile, you're, you're warm to the table, you get good eye contact with, with everyone, they immediately they pay more attention. Uh, and if you come on acting, I think that can look a little bit false sometimes. Do you not, do you not think that your reaction, how you react to what you've done, it can depends influence what you're your doing, audience. Though. I mean, okay, look, look at BGT, right? Look at um, 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 
Oh, I couldn't be my blank. What's his name? Why is my memory going? I'm sure I've got Alzheimer's coming along. Ben Hart. Ben Hart, beautiful piece of theatre, okay? And that was a bit of acting. He was telling a story and he was acting along with it. So that is a bit of acting. Um, but the magic was strong too. But the magic was strong too, as yep. well. I mean, if it had had bad magic, that would have been, you know, it doesn't matter how good a story he told, it wouldn't have looked as good. But, you know, that's a different kind of magic to approaching a table. Um, whether you're on stage as a one, one, one way show where you're showing act to them, or whether it's interactive as a two way thing, it all depends. <coughs> but I, I, I would say likability is the biggest thing, and just make it magical and. Um, uh, be likeable, yeah. That's the best way to, to do it. I, I say forget the acting. The acting can help to present yourself a bit more, you know, more body positions and, and, and voice projection and everything. But I mean, I like to consider myself a good performer, but I'd be a terrible actor. So. In terms of that, then, um, he's mentioned about any products we'd recommend. Now, any this content isn't... regarding this, we've got the perfect content. It came out last week, the book. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, what yeah, I was yeah, yeah, Maximum so, Entertainment. Um, Maximum Entertainment. Two. Yeah, a great, great book. Um, everything you need to know there about being a, a performer. Uh, and gigging and anything you need to know about it so it should be on the shelf down there uh, second uh, shelf second row up that one there that's the one yeah what's the so maximum DVD? entertainment the first one was brilliant that's just as good who's the the guy that you recommended everyone um, should watch on dvd i was trying to remember it the other day for someone it the, was tony clark tony clark uh, and it's uh, here we are uh, insight and illusion okay insight and illusion tony clark was um a student of slidini um, and if anyone could make anything magical, it's Studio Slidini and his students. And the things you're going to learn on here is, um, I mean, there's a load of tricks on here, but things like um, uh, reflexes, uh, timing and misdirection, tension and relaxation, so important. Tension and relaxation, so important for misdirection as well. Moves on the offbeat, natural body motion, synchronization, dipping and ditching a lap, lap object, uh, lingering. Uh, it goes on timing the move, tension and, and, and attention. So that's tension and attention. Um, so yeah, there's so much in, in things like this, and again, that's another valuable um, tool to look at. So, I think uh, I think you take I think you take from what you know, don't you? I mean, I know I know dancers that are very good at the choreography. I my background's music, um, and therefore the music in my show and the cues in my show I think are really good because of that, and also my timing in terms of comedy and just general rhythm. Is quite good again because of that background so i think i think obviously having an acting background definitely helps um, oh yeah i mean that'll give you confidence as well yeah. but i don't think it, it's the key to being a great magician it's a good question really good yeah. question yeah well let's do bobo tricks you've got a little treat over here and uh, up up do you want to get the camera pointing down for us please alex so bobo what's this what's this boat what's that roll over roll over yeah yes. good bird good bird there you go Oh, it's got to be that. Oh, you're going to go there. Give her a ripple. There we go. Ta-da! Can't clap. Yeah, good bird. Come, come up and eat that. Feathers there don't go. clap. Give it a little bow. There you go. Well good done, bird. Well there done. There you go. Oh, okay, right. Way. So, um... Uh, let's have a look. Uh, da -da -da, Adrian, um... So, Adrian Tritton says, uh, what's, what's our favourite routine with a borrowed deck of cards? I visited the shop on Saturdays... Uh, a few Saturdays back and would recommend it to anybody. Uh, well, thank you, Adrian. Uh, favourite trick with a borrowed deck? Now, this depends. Are you allowed to destroy a card on a borrowed deck? If you are, I'll probably do a Mercury folded card to shoe or something like that. I mean, I'll start off with a uh, probably a simple card on forehead, uh, which I like doing. Um, if I could, I'd do a card on ceiling if I've got anything with me for that. Uh, I may do... Um, uh, Ali Bongo's um, uh, shuttleboard, that's a great one, if I've got about two minutes to set up beforehand. So what about yourself? Yeah, I would do, um, oh, I don't do much card magic at all, but card on forehead would be one I'd consider. If I had time to set it up, I think any sort of out of this world presentation with their deck is great. Uh, I'd go down the comedy route and get them to draw a picture of me on their card, on, on one of their cards, and do a small ambitious card routine that my skills allow, which is very minimal, as you'll probably see later. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd throw them in their face and run away. Right, loads of people have joined. Um, uh, there's a lot of people to say hello to, so hello everyone. <laughs> Phil, Tony, Nick, uh, Max, uh, Andrew, Tony, uh, Natalia, uh, Neil Henry, hey buddy, I'm still working on it, don't worry, I'll get it done soon. So, uh, right, Jason Staples, the company pro is a pro is pro show. The company is pro show. What's that for? Oh, Gary comments. James. Oh, okay, Gary James, right. Yeah. Brian Robson, Iggy, that was typing some, somebody else. Okay, blah, blah. 
Uh, uh, oh, Peter, Peter Nardi. Hello, buddy. How are you? Hope you're well. Uh, the competition, but the nice competition. Yeah. Yeah. Our favourite other magic shop. Yeah, so, uh, Lloyd, hello, buddy. Good to see you, mate. Uh, ben Hart, hello, mate. Uh, Darren Rotherham, wow, we've got a good, good, good showing today. Right. Uh, Natalie says, amen to that day regarding what makes a good magician. Thank you, Natalia. So, uh, oh, God, lots of people say hello to you. Hello, everyone in green on my screen. There you go. Um, right. So, do you want to come up and have a chat now? So, we've got some magic royalty here. We have uh, Preston Nyman. Um, so, um, can I say who your dad is in case yeah, you don't know? Go ahead. Yeah, this is Annie Royalty's Nyman's right. son. So, uh, a very accomplished magician and oh, uh, incredibly accomplished, accomplished, accomplished actor. So, um, yeah, so if you don't know, um, uh, Preston uh, has released uh, uh, the uh, folder wall, um, uh, very kindly uh, given it to Prop Dog to sell. And um, we've been putting off talking too much about this because we wanted Preston, the man himself, to come in and talk about his little uh, routine. So, um, yes. Say hello to the camera. Are you okay being in front of the camera? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, must be really nervous in front of the camera. Yeah. We've got four and a half million magicians watching at the moment, so, uh, yeah. Oh, mama. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. She I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> I guess what you would call, yeah, a, uh, a, a bad magician and a, and a bad actor. I right. sort of tick both boxes, but like, I'm going to show you something. I guess. That's, that's nice. That is not true. Yeah, yeah. What well, do you want to come a bit closer to the camera, Alex? And, yeah. uh, and, and uh, Preston can, can demo and talk a bit about. Um, I mean, first of all, how did you come about the idea of this? So it's based on uh, Sid Lorraine stuff from the 50s and 60s. Uh, sort of the idea of, I won't say what it's based on, because I guess you'll see in a minute. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. We'll but, but, it, but it's based on a thing that has existed okay. in various forms. Uh, but not not for a while, and I thought it was time that there was something that kind of ticked the box that uh, the tricks it's inspired by ticks. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So take it away. Jason's your student. So yeah, I mean, okay. Jason's your victim. I mean, I mean, you're a volunteer. My victim, sure. Um, so I, I have a little uh, bit of paper with me. It's not a prediction as such, but it is a prophecy, sort of based okay. on like what fortune tellers would have used uh, a long, long time ago. Can it says the, the card. Yeah, of course. It says the card will appear before your eyes. Couple of cards there. I'm going to give that to you to hang on to. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a deck of cards here. I'm going to uh, spread through them, and I want you to say stop. Yeah, yep, like. sure. Stop. You want to go a little bit further? Go on. Okay. Say stop. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Put the bit of paper in on top of the seven there, and we'll see. I'm going to spread it on here just to get a bit of a. Uh... So I'm not going to use the seven that you uh, put it on because obviously I've seen that one. But mm -hmm. the one underneath, I want you to take, have a look at. Show the camera. Don't show me. I'm obviously looking at the Facebook Live. It doesn't matter too much if I see it. It's delayed, it's delayed. Point. It's delayed. Oh, yeah. yeah, of course it is delayed. That's really weird. Don't look now. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> so I, as I kind of touched upon, I'm not a good enough magician to uh, to make the card appear before your eyes. But I have brought a friend with me who is. The friend whose name, weirdly, is also Jake Allen. The oh, third Jake oh, Allen the today. The third. Jake no way. His face. He's got pretty... Uh, spooky. Pretty starey eyes there. It is spooky. He's going to look in your eyes. He's going to try trash. and work out what the card is. He's going to look... I'm going to move your card there. He's going to look oh, yeah. at the back of the card. the card back straight he thinks myself. I think he might know what it is the card you've chosen will appear before your eyes stare into his eyes all I do is give it a wave <gasps> wow and very was. good oh my god that is great um, so it's based on sort of folded predictions mad magazine fold into this international people there is a feature that I really love about it that's not in the uh, trailer which is the back is blank so if you are it's really like you get a pad of 50 of them too um, yep. If you're working so you and give giving, it away. you can give, give it away, away yeah. and you can put yeah. details or a little sticker with your info on the back or a happy birthday message or um, any message you like. People love playing with it. Uh, it seems like workers really like it and also it's a pretty simple thing to learn once you've learned the fold. Uh, you can set it up in about 30 seconds. So it's a lovely gift, I think, for people sort of starting out too. Yeah, uh, it's, it's kind great. of It's a pretty wide ranging trick. So it comes like this. On a little pad, you can see where we'll be demoing it down there. Yeah. Um, so you, yeah, you got a whole pad of them. Uh, yeah, literally. yeah, fifty of them. Yeah, so in here, spooky's magic because it's spooky because there's Jake Allen on it. Um, and um, <laughs> yeah, so you come with a whole pad of them like that. So I mean, for that price, you can just give them away to everybody. I'm going to worry about yeah. keeping one uh, for the next performance because it's cheap. How much is it again? Twelve. Oh, I think you sell it for twelve. Twelve ninety nine. Ninety nine, maybe. Twelve ninety nine for a pad of fifty. 50, yeah, you can reuse them, easily yeah, give them away. Bargain. There's also something I'd, I'd like to flag too. Uh, with the packaging and the product, is entirely recyclable uh, and every effort's kind of been taken to make sure that it's a sustainable product. We like so that. there's no worry in recycling it or giving it away. And also the packaging, all the ink is uh, eco-friendly and it's, it's a sort of responsible product. And I think probably the best card reveal that has ever been produced, probably. Probably. Probably, probably. at least in the top uh, two or three. So that's uh, Folder of. 
Thank you very much. Right, you've done your piece now. Thank get you out. So much, get you out. Can, you yeah, don't need you anymore. You can keep that. I'll hang on to the uh, to the cards though. <laughs> if you use the voucher code Preston, you can get it for $14.99. Sure. I add, yeah, that's the uh, <laughs> I'm about two pounds worth of value. <laughs> I'm setting up that voucher when we get off there. It's the sloppiest deck I've ever seen yeah, in my yeah. life. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, no Preston. Fine. Take care, mate. Thanks, Preston. Right, no, I really appreciate that. Wonder bar, wonder bar. Hope you like that. Right, so, uh, Bobo, move your tail feathers. Move, move, move. You can't see the screen. There we go. Right, so, uh, questions, questions. Brian Robson, um, would I need to read that? Hang on, let me put my glasses on. I can read better with this. There we go. My new look. Oh, getting old. I need glasses now. My eyesight's going. Uh, right, would you need to read the first Maximum Entertainment to build on what is in Maximum Entertainment 2? Also, how much was that DVD with all the attention and misdirection info? Right, so, um, no. Uh, Maximum Entertainment 2 is a standalone video, so, uh, sorry, DVD. standalone book. book. <laughs> standalone book. It's been a busy day, my mind. It's been a busy, oh, yeah, it's yeah. Been a busy day. No, so it's a standalone book. Uh, it is an incredible book. You don't need to read the first one. It's got so much information on it. goes into a lot of what was in the first book, but expands more onto it and goes more in depth. I mean, magic has moved on a lot since the first book was written. Times have changed, and it's been updated to reflect that. So, yeah, well worth the buy. Um, how much was Insight and Illusion? Uh, have a quick look on the website. I don't want to come off the screen here to, to go to the website because... Uh, if I don't get it back, and you know, we haven't got a, a, a posh set up here, uh, like Mr. Peter Nardi watching. One day, Peter, we might have something to uh, to rival your system. But um, yeah, have a look on the website. Search for Insight Illusion. It's an amazing DVD. I think we've only got one left. I think it's discontinued now as well. It's an old video. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 when they had about 10 left at Murphy's, I pretty much bought every last one because I'm such a huge fan of anything that Tony Clark uh, does uh, and Slidini as well. So, right. Uh, Lee Thompson. Hello, mate. How are you? Happy well. It's been a while. Uh, Steam Barry, hello. Scott, Scott, you'll have to come down for a live one day, mate. You're always always um, coming down after the lives, so come down and join us. We always get people uh, coming in and watch, as we have today with uh, young Dean Thurman. Right, happy Friday, guys. Thank you again for a sucker punch. I'm having loads of fun with it. Yeah, it's a great routine. Uh, right, so uh, Max Gibson, Triumph. What about it, Max? Uh, Max joins us every single week without fail, so uh, love to see you there. Uh, Teresa says, I love Bo you've got a big fan there. High five for Teresa. High five. High five. She won't do anything for that, a treat. Oh, look, I've got an invisible treat, Bo High five. A bit higher. She's sitting and me looking at me like this. <laughs> High five. High five. High five. And the problem is the invisible treat. Yeah, go on, up there. There you go. Right, okay. He let me down, Bobes. Uh, right, hello, Jody. Hello, David Stevenson. Right, Katie Hall. Uh, I haven't got the new version, but I don't. Sorry, I haven't got the new version, but I don't think so. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, the, oh, you're talking to Brian. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, right, hi, Mark Paul. Mark Price. Score oh, loads of people. This is great. Uh, hey, Robert. How are you? Robert Van Buren. Uh, James Kerman, hello mate, it's been a while. Uh, Nat, um, Natalia says, uh, Preston, did I recently watch you in Ghost Stories? Honestly, crap myself. She did, thank mm. you very much. And, and that, what's that commercial I keep seeing you in for the Cheers of Cheerios? Oh, yeah, Cheerios. Yeah, I keep seeing yeah. Preston in the Cheerios commercial. <coughs> ben yeah, and Holly. And, and your, your voiceovers. And I mean, I think so, uh, ben and Holly is my favourite. Uh, Mike Price says, hi Dave, old. Preston and all. So, uh, George Spears, Savan, hello mate, Simon Hill, hello mate. Uh, right, my apologies guys, I have to leave. Have a great day, gents. Uh, Lance, okay, see you later, Lance. Uh, Daryl, good afternoon. Uh, right, so Max, it was in response to what card trick you did with a borrowed deck without destroying a card. Ah, yeah, good call, Max. Right, so we're caught up in there, and let's get on with some more questions over here. So yeah, make you jump. we mentioned Katie is watching, and she's asked a question hey, about the brand new floating Sharpie. Okay, well, K Katie's going to answer any of our French questions. Uh, anything to do with David Stone uh, and Carrot, she's going to help us out with as well. So, um, right, so we got floating Sharpie out. Um, yep. It only arrived yesterday, literally as we were leaving, and then when your message came through, we thought, oh, we'll open it and have a quick look. We also... And can't we we're not selling it it's not released until monday oh it's not released until monday. it's not released on no. monday and we were going to do it but then we opened up thought it's going to take a little bit of setup not a lot um there's a few things in here that's because it gives you a lot of refills and um i mean i watched the trailer i think it's brilliant i love the trailer the fact that he's just given it to a friend of his who didn't know anything about magic and has taught him how to do it in, in a matter of seconds which is the best way of showing how easy it it's is not to even do. a friend it's just a random just, just a random guy is it oh yeah, yeah but brilliant yeah. yeah yeah um but it, it's pretty much based on on matthew's um uh, if you've seen his Fizzamat, his amazing coin going across there, I'm presuming it's based on that. It looks very much similar to me, uh, similar to, uh, to that to me. 
Um, but yeah, it would take a little bit of setting up. We just haven't had that time, Katie, because uh, we're one man short today. Um, we didn't have time to do it, but uh, once it's released, um, I'll get one of the guys here, or myself, we'll, we'll pick it up for next week and we'll give a damn then. But um, don't worry, uh, it's Matthew Wright. He produced some really great stuff and um, it looks amazing on the trailer. And um, we kind of know what's going on, so we know it's going to be good. And what a great little... Uh, uh, just open it. If you're going to get somebody to sign a card, why just bring out Sharpie, you know, do something magical with it. If you can, make it appear and then just make it levitate and then give it to them. Brilliant. Uh, what so, what yeah. I really like about it on from first impressions is, is, is Matthew's obviously thought about working it. It's not just going to be silver screen. He's provided extra uh, things in there so you can make up spares. So, for instance, yeah. if you want to hand out the Sharpie to have it used as a regular Sharpie, you can at the detriment to one of your setups yeah. but he's given you, you plenty to to I mean, have and then remakes you're it's not idiots good. you're not idiots so you're going to know the method behind it you won't know the setup of the method but you know the method behind it and that method means you may have to break something in order to give it out but you're going to get what that is and you can instantly pretty much with what matthew's given you reset and, and go for it again yeah so yeah um but katie does says any trip uh, any tips on using visible thread yes so one of the biggest things katie if you've never used thread before you're going to have problems breaking it constantly it's always going to be a case of it comes out oh, broken again broken again mainly because you, you need to build up a kind of muscle memory especially when you're dealing with loops as well because loops will stretch to a certain point anything past that are going to break so i would recommend first of all starting off with some string or some cord or a little bit of nylon thread or something like that something you can visibly see just to practice all the routines um, and it also depends on whether you're using an itr or just thread on its own also look into other types of thread thread can come from so many different places for example if you've got any black nylon tights that's a perfect form for thread so, uh, sorry, were you going to say something, person? Okay. Yeah, a nylon thread, uh, nylon tights, brilliant. Just get some nylon tights or just go and buy them. The 99p, you could harvest so much thread from that. Uh, and most of it's really, really good thread. You can also get invisible elastic in it. If you don't know how to harvest it, uh, drop me an email. I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to do it or make a quick video. In fact, I might even make a how-to video how to harvest thread from a set of black nylon tights. You can buy thread as well. If you're going to use Kevlar thread, that's going to be different to nylon, woolly nylon thread. So woolly nylon thread will stretch where Kevlar won't. Not so important if you're using an ITR, but more important if you're just going to do a hookup, say, from the computer to me to, to levitate something. So that also brings me on to the question about the feather. Who was it who was asking about that? Dan Slater. I'm not sure if Dan's watching, uh, but Dan has asked if we're putting, uh, oh, sorry, Dan is putting together a Harry Potter routine and wants to make a feather float. Best method. It's going to be thread, Dan, um, no matter what. Uh, you're not going to be working together. You're, there's no way you're going to have some kind of blow and have any kind of control in it. The only control you're going to have on it is going to be with an invisible thread. Now, the fact you're putting together a routine says to me you're not going to be doing it for a video or social media. If you're doing it for social media, you can make a feather float exactly the same as you do in Harry Potter. So in Harry Potter, big old feathers there. They get the wand. They say they're pop bogacus, floaticus, and it just floats <laughs> up because like that. That is um, the word, yeah. Uh, and you can recreate that on um, a social media video very simply just by having thread above or having a loop above, thread going up, somebody holding it over here and just floating it up. If you're doing it as part of a routine, you're not going to be able to do that. So the only real way you're going to make it thread like that, I mean, you could have a system where you have thread hooked over your head or over your ear and kind of bring it up there, but you're going to have difficulty making it flow upwards that way. The only way to make it flow upwards is to be moving your body away. So in that situation, you probably have a hook up um, something like, if you can imagine uh, a bit of line, okay, that um, you'll have kind of like a hoop on it, so a little hoop, and you'll you'll touch them. This will be invisible thread, so a little hook where you're a bit of uh, sticky stuff or something. You'll, you'll hook something onto something like that, okay. So one will be uh, attached to you, uh, and then one will be to a feather. So as you're kind of moving away, that feather's coming up. If that makes sense. So you might be able to do it still. You might be able to kind of do it so you're, you're moving up like that, but it's more than likely you're gonna want something on a bit of a hoop. But again, if you wanna do that, drop me an email. I'll make a quick video of a setup for you, and then you can use that to, to work from. So uh, I hope that helps on that, Dan. So, uh, right, okay. Let's have a, a quick look for some more questions. Um, in fact, should we talk about something new? Well, we've got something to talk about uh, other than Folder. We talked about Folder all. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about something else. Well, we can, we can kill two birds with one stone. Okay, so uh, Michael Cooley is asked. Cover of his. What did you say? <laughs> Kill two <laughs> cockadoos with one. There's only frame. one of you. Don't worry. Yeah, there's only one of you. He only one of you. Yes, bite him. Um, Michael Cooley's asked about our opinion on Mr. Magic, and their pro He's not listening to me. <laughs> Michael Cooley's asked about our thoughts on Mr. Magic products, and we have one here. <sighs> okay. Um, Mr. Magic. How would you describe Mr. Magic? 
Mr. Magic. Okay, let's say you've got a great company out there, um, like Sans. No, not Sans. What am I saying? Um, a great company out there that produces magic, something like Vanishing Ink or Alakazam or ourselves. Uh, we like to think we will produce higher quality items. We'll do the best we can to give you the best quality item, but you'll be paying for that. You'll be paying a little bit more of a higher price to get the quality of that item. Mr. Magic is at the budget end. It's like going buying the Tesco's home brand or going to a pound shop and buying the magic trick from the pound shop. You're going to get it incredibly cheap, but you're going to get uh, a not... Or a substandard product, let's say that. More often than not, you'll get it and it'll almost look like a second-hand product. Sometimes it will be really badly made and won't last for very long, but you're getting what you pay for. They do produce some really good stuff, but it's going to be cheap on the lower level. For example, if you're going to start cups and balls and you're not sure if you're going to get into a cups and ball routine, don't spend £100 on a really nice set. Get a Mr. Magic set for £9.99. Practice it if you like it, then you can invest in something better. So that's how I would describe Mr. Magic. Nearly all the products are made in China, so you've got the same quality Chinese um, uh, tat. Um, but other than that, they, they, they do produce some good stuff and you're going to get what you pay for, literally. So, uh, yeah. I think, the, I think, though, to be fair, the price does reflect that. Yeah. So I think I I really like that the uh, what you've just said about the cups and balls. Yeah. Because if you're not sure, yeah, don't spend a lot yeah. of money on a, a, the beautiful. Yeah. You, you may cups not. And balls yeah. And you, you may you may hate cups and balls after a week. You may think sod that. Thank God I only paid nine quid for a set. So that's what it is, really. So yeah, that's. Should my we opinion. do? Uh, we've got something new in from Mr. Magic. Should we talk about that quickly? Well, well, well on the subject of Mr. Magic. Yeah. Cool. Right. So I've got this. Uh, that looks rather second hand to me. <laughs> it's like, it's like we planned this. Um, we've got this uh, frame here, Dave. And um, okay. So I actually used one of these in my children's show. It's not a Mr. Magic version, but this is the only version of this prop that I found anywhere that we can get for okay. you guys. So I like the effect. Um, I'm going to do it a bit differently to how I would do it in the kids' show, but it hopefully will give you an idea. So uh, deck of cards, as you can see, they are all different and this was a children's entertainer performing this so I apologize I do this you say stop stop fantastic have a look at the card don't show me show everybody else the Never. three of clubs Stop. excellent they are all completely different Never. correct yeah wonderful now keep that secret keep it safe in fact I'm sure. I do this you say stop stop pop your card back in there for me <laughs> what have you done you just... Bobo threw it away Bobo yeah, blame on Bobo put it back go. in there fantastic yeah. Now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to hold on. I'm joking. What I'd like you to do is hold on to that for me. Okay. And in a minute. I've no idea what's going on, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to give you a gift. Ooh. Now, this is not any gift. This is a Mr. Magic gift. Right. Uh, uh. So, we're going to put this in the bag. And you could send this to a friend. Now, I'd like you to hold on to that for me. Mm -hmm. I'll have the deck of cards. Now, do you remember the card you've thought of? Yes, I do. Fantastic. Now, if I was doing it in a children's show, I would have had the child draw a picture of me on the card, which is very funny, and then I would make the card vanish from the deck and appear in that bag. No way! Not only will it appear in that bag, it will hopefully appear in the frame. No way! So what was the card you chose? Ah, uh, seven of diamonds. Thank you, Bobo. Seven of diamonds. Right. Turn the bag around. Can, can I take it out? You can, of course, oh, okay. yeah. Just, I don't want you doing anything. Any funny. Yeah, funny this. What have we got? The seven of diamonds, Ooh, ladies and gents. Seven of diamonds. So that there you go. is uh, our new sand frame by Mr. Magic. Sand frame. Sand frame. Sand frame. Can you describe to them what a sand frame is? Do you actually want me to? Yeah, how long have we got? Uh, well, we're going till five, so I would say... Yeah. Just uh, 27 minutes. Okay, 27 minutes. Yeah, okay, 20. fine. Then we won't show them what it is. No, so, uh, we haven't got time. But yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll uh, put that over there for them to look at later yeah, on. Yeah, good. Okay, so, uh, um, right. Uh, oh, uh, Alex, would you mind just putting down to who that is? Yeah. So, Who's that? Yeah. Who's that? Who's that? Who is it? Who is it? Kill! Attack! Seize! Okay, all right. Um, it's, 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 a good, it's a good effect. So, if you're, if you're doing a mentalism effect or a stage, stage magic, Again, it's like a product I was talking to a customer in the shop earlier. It's up to you to come up with a routine for it, but there is potential there. It's just cool, cool gimmick. Awesome. Awesome. Right, okay. Uh, Paul Sunderland says, late to the party. Um, what have I missed besides seeing, of course? You missed everything, yeah? Um, so, uh, hello. 
Uh, excuse a live video, we just just do your own thing and chop them the guys all right. So, uh, all right. right, Russell Davies, hello mate. Um, no, I haven't still got the house in Fairham, otherwise it would be a long commute every day. No, I live uh, about two minutes on the shop now, so, uh, right, okay. Um, do, what should we talk about next? Um, oh, Charlie Robinson says, can we demonstrate how to wrap a thumb tip with a plastic note like in Dave's sugar routine? Okay, so a lot of people have been asking this. Um, They've got uh, my sugar routine, but they're having problems with the actual uh, note. I'll come over, uh, Alex. They're having problems wrapping the note. Okay, when you wrap a note in a thumb tip, what you don't want to do is wrap it like this, okay? You're going to have real problems with that, especially with the angles. So when you wrap a note, grab a note like that, and then just twist it down that way. And when you twist, you're going to wrap around like this and make a cone and kind of make it downwards so you get a nice deep cone, okay? Now that deep cone, hello, Bobo. That deep cone over there, okay will allow you to get a nice point on here so you can just bend that over now the problem with these new plastic notes which is the problem charlie's going to have is as you let go it all wants to pop open so what you do is you roll over has gone to see the new visitor in the shop so you roll over like that you tuck the edge over okay and then you're going to hold that corner over as you hold the thumb tip like that that allows you to hold that shape always point the, the highest part of the rope you're pressing see you later mate nice to see you thanks for coming along um, yeah, it's always nice to have that highest point there pointing towards the tallest person whoever's watching. If someone's watching over there and they're really tall, I'll hold it back around over here. Okay, so that's the way you do it. And then when you let go, you're just going to put it in and just undo it like that. Okay, so one more time, just roll around the thumb tip, squeeze the bottom over like that, and then hold everything like that together as one go. So hopefully that helps, uh, Charlie, which leads me on to our next point is, um, who was it was asking about the thumb tips? Um, do. Someone was asking about the different thumb oh, sizes. Oh, I've got that. Yeah, uh, somebody was asking about okay, that. Okay, so um, um, uh, my uh, chief primary member of staff has let us down and uh, has not printed off a question. <laughs> All right, so somebody was asking about the different thumb tip sizes and what are they like in <coughs> comparison. So I think the best way, if you bring the camera on close, I will. Uh, I've got all the different thumb tips we have over here, and I'm going to show them on my hand. So we're going to start off with uh, this one here. This is the little tip, and this is designed basically for kids. Uh, it's like a fingertip for kids. So on my finger, it will go on there. You can probably do something with that and, uh, and use it. Um, it. Can be used on your little finger as well, which is probably why it's called a little tip actually. Uh, and I wouldn't really put it on your thumb unless you have really small thumbs. Going on up from that, we have the. Uh, uh, the fingertip itself, which is in comparison to the little tip, is that size. In comparison to a standard classic, it's that size. So a fingertip is what it says. It's designed to be uh, put onto your finger as you're coming out. It doesn't matter which finger you put it on. You might want to do it that way. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the uh, the fingertip over there. Okay, let me move on to the junior size. Uh, the junior one is um, uh, not here. Ah, didn't have a junior. Um, uh, Dean, can you do me a favour? Can you go into the thumb tip drawer? Can you get a, a junior thumb tip? Okay, so here we have the classic size. That's the standard one that most people use. That's the one I use. And a good classic. Don't try and shove it all the way in your thumb like that. That's a big no-no. You just want it to go loosely on the thumb there. You know that you've got a good, uh, a good fit on your hand. Is if you can shake it, and it will eventually come off. Okay. If it doesn't come off, it's on too tight. So a junior thumb tip in comparison to the classic is uh, this size over here. So if you can see the size difference there. Okay, on my hand, a junior just fits on the tip of my finger there, fits nicely on the, uh, the finger there. In fact, that fits better for me than a classic, um, the, the, uh, uh, the actual fingertip does. Okay, moving on from that, we have the, um, the, uh, the vinyl. So uh, we have, uh, that's the vinyl thumb tip. They are the same size as the classic. Uh, they're just a bit softer uh, like that. And then we have the soft one itself, which is really soft. We haven't got one of those down here. Then we go to the king size. Now, the king size is exactly the same as a classic. It's just longer. Okay, so you can fit longer things in there, longer, bigger silks, um, or uh, a small goldfish or something like that. And then you go on to the XXL. Now, I don't know why, but it goes from classic to XXL. There isn't an XL. I don't know whether they did an XL at one point, but an XL, literally, you can fit a whole classic look right inside there like that. So there isn't really an in-between in size. Uh, what I would recommend, if you find your hands are too big for classic, but too small for a double um, uh, XL, what I'd recommend is get a double XL, pour some boiling water over it, squash it down, put it under some cold water, and it will keep it in a good shape, fairly similar to the stretch thumb tip, which is another alternative you can use, because that way you can stretch it out, put it on your thumb there, and it doesn't matter if it's too big, even on your little finger, it's gonna stay on there nicely. So uh, hopefully that gives you a little idea into thumb tips. And uh, oh, and of course we do have the fingertip like that. So that's one of the fingertips. It's designed to be used in between as a sixth finger. So um, you use it kind of like that, uh, more for stage work. You get come a, a large and a small for that, but you wouldn't want to come in and do whole uh, like that close up. That's purely for stage. You can come across like that and then pull a, a much larger silk out. So uh, those are the range of thumb tips.
What's interesting about the king size one, I would never have thought it was just a case of it being longer rather than the diameter wider. Yeah, no, it's like, yeah, it's identical to a. a I've always thought yeah, I'd yeah. like to do bigger silks and never knew how. So that's yeah. Oh, well, there we go. Handy. That's how to do it. Right. Okay. Any more questions online? Uh, cheers to the advice. Uh, you really are the ultimate prop daddy. Ah, thank you, Charlie. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, which of the TTs are plastic? Okay. So they're all plastic. They're all injection molded plastic. Uh, but they do uh, different types of plastic. So you've got the soft one, which is really soft. You've got the vinyl, which is uh, a lot thinner uh, and it's slightly different. You don't want to use a soft if you're going to do a bill switch because you'll find it really hard to pull the the actual uh, the bill out. It's kind of uh, a bit rubbery and sticky. So uh, yeah, you don't want to do that. Right. Okay. Any more questions? No more questions online. That's good. Uh, right. Um, ba, 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 ba. Oh, hang on. We've got messages over here as well. Um, please tell me about the magic products. Uh, hey, it's all right. Hey, so, fine. Like, so we've got people asking questions. We did a, a post earlier on asking about questions for the live, and we got somebody trying to ask questions on that post as opposed to the live one. So, uh, uh, right, okay. Uh, you can cope one of this uh, this time. Uh, so yeah, guys, if you have found us now, um, then hello, uh, you're on the wrong post. Uh, if you haven't, you're not going to see this till later on. So ha ha, you're on the wrong post. Right, okay. Um, who's next, next one? Uh, do we perform close-up linking rings by Matthew Garrett? Uh, what feedback do we get from people? Um, uh, so people think they know how the yeah. works. Steve, uh, okay. Right, so... Um, I, I before I used to hate Lincoln rings. It was just like oh, I had just one of those tricks I didn't like. And then I had to go to Dubai and, and perform a lot in a shopping mall to get people into a restaurant with so many languages. I had to find something visual that I could just sit there and do until I caught somebody's eye and then got them over and then I could you know do some more magic. So I started learning Lincoln rings. I, and I, I worked on Shooter Gower's routine with the six inch rings and um, after about four or five months I mastered it and I loved it. It's a great routine and I, I, if you perform it right. People don't guess. Um, people who don't know will assume that people will guess the, uh, the method, but they don't. If you perform it correctly, they, they, you know the method is thrown out the window. They have no idea how it's done. They may, in their mind, think this is how it's done, but it's not. For example, we've got some there. Yep. Okay. So anyone who thinks, oh, there's a big old gap in the ring, um, you know, the moment you do this, you know, you, you start just there, and you go one, two, and three like that. The moment you do that, they forget any idea about a gap in a ring. It's only people who sit there and go like this that they're going to think, oh, there's a gap in the ring. But if you do it right and you sit there, you know, all the way around there and then just, oops, just one, two, link it on. Oh, hang on. Yeah, he says, come to post the camera. See that? Is that in focus? Yep. One, two, like that. There you go. Once you do that, it throws any idea of a method out the window. Uh, however, um, the question was over to you, Jason. Yeah, so uh, who is it? It's Darren. Uh, Darren asked about a specific move that you can do to show both rings solid. So, in addition to what you've just said, because yeah, I don't do this move, you know, there's, there's a really, version. really lovely, and it's so nice to watch, especially now, uh, video of Paul Daniels performing on stage with the big rings. Right. And the first thing he says is, "Now most people that have a set of these have a whapping great hole in the ring." Yes. And it and talks about it and and actually tips the method, and then blows them away with mm. the possibility of it being there as, as zero. So that is a nice way to sort of talk about it, saying, I bought one from a shop when I was a kid and it had this and this and this. Yeah. And then you can show that this, so for instance, in the in the link, in the link, hello, it's been a while. In the link, you can show one and you can show two. Now Darren was asking about that, that specific move. Yeah. Okay, so what you're doing is obviously, I mean, I, yeah, obviously you're going to spin this ring twice. So in slow motion, you're spinning once, you're bringing them together, and you're switching over, okay? Lovely Which is move. a really nice move. So yeah. at speed, at speed, you can link, spin, spin, and then, and then go into any routine that you want to go into. Well, I mean... I've had people say to me, oh, I've got one of those sets. I think you can buy them. Is it Hamley's and you can buy them at now or something like that? You can, you can buy cheap sets of them now. And I've had people come to me and say, oh, I've got one of those sets, but it's different yours. I had a big hole in it. Yeah. And, you know, 
And it's great because you because people, people genuinely believe that's the case. Uh, the best linking ring teaching I've found is there's an amazing, amazing guy called Levent, and he's got a four disc set on linking ring magic. This is Levent. Oh yeah. And it's just there is nothing that's not covered. He shows a beautiful routine with the. Or he teaches all these moves. There must be a hundred moves on there. With, with big rings where you have one starting on your arm, you throw that up, you give that one for examination, and there's a switch, and then you give them the same ring again. And then they're completely completely on board with the fact there are two solid rings, and then you go ahead and link them. This is great, really yeah. good. Oh, one more on the subject of the linking rings as well. What's the new set that's come out? Is it the... Um, so Matt uh, Garrett has... No, no, the, the, the one... Oh, the Masado ones. No, not Masado, the, the ones that we they say you can hand out. Exam, but you oh, R2. Yeah. So there's a DVD. Yeah, okay. yeah right. let's talk about it because yeah, we might as well talk about it. A little bit again. So, yeah, um, so the R2 video, we had a customer phone up the other day and he says uh, he wanted to return them because on the trailer they say you can hand out the rings for examination. So we watch the trailer and lo and behold, in the, in the trailer, you know, as far as you're concerned, you're getting a set of rings you can hand out to them, but it's not the case. You can hand them out, but it's all to do with a switch, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a very it's, clever yeah, switch. Very clever switch. So when you buy it, we put a warning on the website now because we, we didn't look into it enough beforehand. We, you know, we weren't aware of this. Uh, but yeah, you're led to believe on the on the uh, instructions. You get some kind of amazing gimmick that you can link and then give everything out to people. You can't do that, but there's a way of doing it by doing a, a certain switch. A very clever method. But if you do want to buy that and you are interested, just make sure you're aware of this before you buy yeah, it. You're getting, so, yeah, you're getting the DVD and, and, and nothing yeah. else. Yeah. Um, but it's a normal set of rings. In terms of rings, if you're interested in learning rings, I've watched Matt Garrett's brilliant stuff. I've watched Shooter Gowers. If you're a kind of street magician, Masado rings are so cool. They are weighted so nicely. You can do stuff with them that you can't really do with other rings. Highly, highly recommend checking out the video of that. He is literally the suavest man in the world. Um, and it's yes, yeah, stunning. Really, really good. And I think with link with <laughs> linking rings, I did the full full Daniel's joke. Um, with rinking links, there is something for everyone. Dependent on what, doesn't matter what your style is. I do it big for children's magic on, you know, the parties. Small, up close. It is, it is great. Really, really good. And obviously things like Ninja Plus and the new one, Fusion with the ball. There's something for everyone. It's really, really cool. All right. Right. Well, Katie, um, she's got a really bad internet connection and. Um Excuse me, sorry to hear you missed everything about the invisible thread, but hopefully you can watch it back later on and see it then, Katie. So uh, if not, drop us an email and I'll talk to you all again. Uh, Mike Price has great explanation of sand frame. Um, right, uh, must try and catch up with you guys more often. Have to get back to work. Uh, Mike, sod work, come and watch us. We're more interested in the work. Uh, right, uh, Abe says, uh, why the black thumbnail, Dave? Are you copying Penn and Teller? Uh, no, I, um, I was making um, a, a gimmick that had to flap something across very fast to make a, a 10 million pound pink diamond disappear inside a glass case. Uh, and the only thing I could find that I could do remote control was um, a glass breaking device that had a little hammer that goes back and forward. And I was converting the hammer to a little bit of a flap. And uh, while testing out that little glass breaking hammer went shoom and uh, trashed my... Uh, uh, now, rather painful. There we go. That is the explanation of that, Abe. Uh, right. Uh, hello, Darren Snellgar. Nice to see you, mate. Or oh, nice for you to see me. Um, right. Uh, Favourite egg bag routine, asks J.R. Woodcock. Uh, do you sell an egg for it? So, uh, J.R., um, I don't perform egg bag, so I don't really have a favourite routine. Uh, regarding the eggs, uh, we were making egg for life. Um, it, the development was about two years ago. We put it on a hold. We're just having too many problems cost effectively making a gimmick. We can make a gimmick, but it takes like three hours per one. But we were making basically the most perfect egg, well, I would say fake egg, but it's a real egg that you can use, kind of like our soup to egg gimmicks. Um, but yeah, it's one of the things on the back burner. We'll, we'll eventually finish making it. But do you have a favorite egg bag routine? I'm the proud owner of a Hobson yeah. oh, egg bag. Bobo! Uh, Come on, leave and your shoe egg. And no, it's, it's brilliant, learn, brilliant. The best thing, right. Something, some information. Have to Hopefully, learn, not to there's there's um, there's a company called Kmart Kmart Magic, and Mike Austin came in the shop the other day who used to demonstrate and do videos for Kmart Magic, and okay. his oh his egg bag stuff is the best I've ever seen. He's literally on the stage stamping on this bag, uh -huh. and yet the egg is produced. It's phenomenal. Nice. I think I think there may be a project in the future where that is um, that's going to come to market. So. If you see it, get it, because it is yeah. phenomenal. 
Really, really good. But Hobson's awesome. Hobson's egg bag and routine. Nobody can do it like Jeff Hobson with the slow motion and the. Yeah, he's uh, just brilliant. Yeah, really good. He's a great actor, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good and a great magician. Yeah, yeah. So uh, ah, bonjour, David Burlet. Uh, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Katie's going to travel. Uh, Phil J. Hello, Charlie Dent. Hello, Brett Sewell, Rob Sharp. Amy Berry. Uh, right, Mark Paul. Matthew's work on the rings is awesome. His rings are awesome quality. Yes, they yeah, are. Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah, so, uh, oh, hello, lots more people. Um, Charlie Robinson says, hi, Jake. Um, Clive St. James Greenaway, have you any custom silks to show quality-wise? When you say custom silks, do you mean the printing? If so, we have some over here somewhere. Um, where was the one? There it is. Over there. Yeah, these are, these are amazing. Really, really good, these. So these are the Prop Dog um, custom printed silks, and you can see there the quality is absolutely stunning. I know it's a low res because it's a live video, but the colors are wonderful. They're not screen printed. They're actually properly machine printed. I don't know what process they use. We don't print them in-house. No, it's not sublimation. No, sublimation is when they pr uh, heat print onto something, isn't it? I think, I isn't it? is when they goes into the fabric like on side. Oh, does it? Oh, okay, right, yeah. Okay, that might be sublimation. I thought sublimation was, was like um, uh, a heat press onto it. But yeah, absolutely beautiful quality. And it's crystal sharp. You know, the, the, the edges on them are, are wonderful. So uh, that is the quality of the silks. The downside to these are, these aren't the same type of silk as you have as magician silks, which are wafer, wafer, wafer thin. Um, these are... I mean, I wouldn't even like to guess what micron it is, but yeah, they're thicker. They're, they're more like yeah. a silk you wear as a, as a garment of clothing as opposed to a magician silk. I mean, that would be a... It's like a thin napkin, isn't it? That's a 24 inch silk, I guess. And if I was trying to put that into my hand, we'll see how far I can get into it. Yeah, I mean, a 24 inch silk, normally I can close my hand all the way around it and that's what it is there, but it does pop up nicely. So uh, it's more like the sort of Scarfs, silk scarfs that women wear, you know, on their, their head, Asian women, not Asian, uh, Muslim women wear, more like that kind of thing, uh, Israeli, not Israeli, uh, kind of, where's that, uh, Istanbul, uh, Turkey, yeah, so in Turkey they wear those things all the time, so, right. I think where we are on here, it doesn't seem to be any new questions uh, oh no there we go uh, right David Burlett, um I can say uh, I can send you a screenshot from TV on computer of my picture and the result yeah yeah okay yeah so David Burlett, we printed a silk for him uh, and it was just a screenshot from um, uh, uh, a video and uh, we sent him the print on that and it came out amazing so that was, that was yeah. when Francis got talent wasn't it David so very good right Charlie Robinson uh, says I've been one uh, let me get my glasses on Oh, I can see again, right. Uh, I've been wondering uh, this for a while, but what's the justification for getting someone to write down information in mentalism? Surely as a mentalist, you should just know the info without being written down. Right, Charlie, I couldn't have said, it, said this better myself. Yeah, I know exactly where you're coming from. I hate this, right? So you got somebody and say, uh, right, think of a word, write it down for me. And you're like, well, you're mine really, you can just tell them what the word is. Well, it's so, I have a way around this. My, my justification for doing this is, um, so if I'm gonna use, um, say, a jack swallow, a thought transmitter, I'll say, um, Alex, can you just think of a word? Don't, don't tell me what it is, just think of the word. Okay, and have you got it? Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what, I've had this problem before where I've said something and someone said, nah, no, that's not it. So, to make sure you're not gonna lie later, not that you would lie, just wanna make sure, write that word down. Okay, write the word down this way, you can't change your mind later and say, no, it wasn't that, because this does happen before. Okay, written it down, wonderful, put it down there. And that's my justification, Charlie. Because otherwise, you know, literally, if you were thinking of the word car, and I said car, you could say, oh, no, no, it was bicycle. And there's no proof. So use that as your justification. So uh, that's my idea. You're, you're that's exactly it? what I was gonna say. Oh, okay, well, there we go. Right, yeah. right okay, there we go. It's, it's a receipt, isn't it? It's Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's right, confirmation so. that. Hey, Brett, how are you? Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, Brian Robson says, upcoming hot products are hitting the market soon. Uh, right, okay, what have we got hitting the market? Oh, we've, well, we've, can we talk about what we sold today? The Spectro Touch. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course we can, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's wicked. So you it's must, really good. You must have all seen the Spectro Touches. Um, right, so it's been out everywhere. All the videos are going out about Spectro Touch, and uh, we kind of looked at it and thought, hmm, what's it going to be like? We got one in. Uh, unfortunately, Paul Martin came in over the shop earlier and saw it and instantly bought it. It is brilliant. Okay, it is really, really good. Amazing product. 
Be aware though, it's not really something you want to do a close up, okay? You are going to have to do a little bit of setup and guiding with the person. So at some point, you're going to have to touch people as you shake their hand or put them up on stage and do something with them. And ideally, you don't want anybody behind the spectator. But what a great, if you're going to do a routine on stage or parlor, absolutely fantastic. It just kicks the ass out of all previous methods yeah. of doing the same thing yeah uh, we played around with the gimmick the gimmick is awesome really well made and a lot of thought has gone into what you can do with that gimmick as well the way you can program it and do certain things with it so uh, yeah really really good um, I, I would just not suggest doing it in close up unless you have a very very good uh, handling of people and making sure that you can control people both during the trick and after the trick as well. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, I think it's amazing. If you want, if you want to do what he does, you can. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One hundred percent. What you see on stage. Yeah. It, well, we we played with it for probably twenty five minutes before yeah. Paul um, bought it and literally just having fun with it. It worked yeah. every single time. We, we weren't too sure about it, so we only bought one in to test it, because if I didn't like it, it's an expensive product to have a lot in stock that I didn't want to sell, and I'm really gutted now I didn't buy like 20 of them, because yeah, it is really good. So the, um, uh, go to one of the magic shops, go to Malakazam, buy it from Malakazam if they've got it. We'll probably have it in stock in a couple of days. Uh, well, next, end of next week, probably. Probably, yeah, middle of next week we'll, we'll have some, but if you want them before that, pop to another shop. But yeah, really, really good product. So Easy, uh, yeah. easy to program. It, yeah. it pairs instantly does it does everything it says it does it's really yeah. really good other new products well money press extreme burn money press is now officially on the website we do um uh, the standard one for all money sizes except for 50 pound notes but we've now got an option for 50 pound notes on the website got a drink um, and news drink and the news is already done blank night came for bank night the ultimate bank night which mean uh, mine yours and mystery by smith and peacock uh, that came in last week paul and jamie are coming to talk about it this friday that's new uh, we talked about the floating sharpie. What else is new coming out? Um, uh, we've got sharp turn coming. Someone's asked about oh, yeah, sharp turn. Matthew Wright, Another, Matthew, be Matthew Wright's been busy. Um, so Matthew Wright has brought out outnumbered uh, the um, magic yeah. square. Oh, sort of oh, 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 yeah. Um, right. So um, last week uh, we talked about outnumbered, and I said the only downside was on the trailer they they kind of did a bit of a naughty cutaway while they did the secret move. Right. Well, Matthew um, emailed me afterwards with an uncut video performance of the way he did it, and uh, I'm completely blown away. I didn't see anything. A lovely routine, and the way he put the routine together was just fantastic. It, you know, it's gone from being something that was good and I wouldn't do to actually, do you know what, I've seen that I would do it because his little routine with it was brilliant. So, uh, where is there it? it is. We yeah. sold out already. We might have sold out already, yeah. But anyway, but yeah, um, so outnumbered, that's really, really good. Well, some, some yeah. recent additions, if you so want. I, I rely on you and did rely on Dean to find out what's new because yeah, I'm yeah. downstairs building stuff, so I don't know what's coming out. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so outnumbered uh, has obviously come out. Matthew Sharp Turn and Floating Sharpie. Don't get the two confused. One floats and one is. Uh, he talks about it's not the end; it's the journey, and it, it's it's wicked. It's, it's a, well, it looks brilliant. I've not had actually had one to play with, but it's a sharpie, and all of a sudden the end goes from here to the bottom, and as he's about to write, the end jumps up to the top. Yeah, it looks great. It looks really, really good. Um, so Matthew Wright's got a load of stuff coming out. He's also doing something with poker chips, I believe, that I saw earlier today, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been been a busy period. In fact, Matthew uh, t uh, messaged me earlier on, and he's got a great handling for the drink in the news. Oh, drink in the news tabloid edition. That's now on the website, by the way. But he's got a great little routine for it at Christmas, and he's told me what the routine is, and he said I'm free to use it uh, to show you guys. So uh, I'm going to wait near Christmas, but yeah, really good little idea for using drink in the news. So um, very quickly, I uh, just sort of know where was it about the drinking uh, about the the bottle. Um, Oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, Isaac Gifford. Isaac Gifford asks, can we demonstrate vanishing bottles? Uh, this is a vanishing bottle. It's a Nielsen vanishing coat bottle. Uh, ideally, you want a brown paper bag or some kind of bag to do it. We don't have uh, any in stock, so I'm just going to show you with a clear bag and you see what's happening. There's not really a lot to demonstrate there, um, uh, Isaac. All it is a case of you put a bottle in and uh, you can make it vanish, but you're not really making it vanish. You're just basically just crunching it up into a small thing and just, you know, throwing it over your shoulder or whatever. That's just one of many routes. <laughs> That's just one of many routines you can do with it. Of course, you can do the reverse. You can produce a bottle from it as well. So to produce a bottle, you just kind of have it like this. And then you could have the bag examining and kind of go in there and produce it. There's loads of ways of 
of, of using it um, but yeah there's not really a lot to demonstrate with it really they're basically a bottle hollow in there uh, they do crunch down you can buy a gimmick called a slick squid gimmick which is an insert that you put inside it which allows you to put some drink in it uh, it's kind of like a condom or balloon shaped for a bottle so you can take the bottle off you can pour some stuff out don't do it with the um, the one there unless you're going to hide it like that but you can pour some liquid out uh, beforehand um, and then you can squash it again afterwards um, if you're going to use a slick squid uh, slick squid i would recommend using one of the brown beer bottles because then you can't see it you can pour all the liquid out you want and no one's gonna sort of see that that's not really working that way but mm -hmm. yeah so that's what it is really um yeah not really a lot more to demonstrate yeah on that uh there was one other question as well we were asked about which is jetbox yes uh now somebody asked about so somebody asked me to get this in we've had it in for a few weeks but again just time who has been it? somebody who was it uh jeffrey hubbard time has been of the essence um basically from the trailer, you right. can do what he shows. Oh, let's have a look inside for the very first time. So this is yeah, Jeffrey Hubbard, Jetbox by Michael Chatelain. Is it too good to be true? I will tell you. Let's have a look. So I, I talk about the effect? Well, yeah, talk about the effect first right, while so I have a look inside. The effect would be he has a, a deck of cards or a box of cards and he has a, I think it's a queen of hearts he uses, and he holds the two together like so. And then on three, one, two, three, boom the Queen of Hearts disappears and it goes inside the box. So there's different things he does oh. where he he rubs the card box on his arm, puts the card box over the, the, the card and then the card's inside. You can do what he shows. Um, why are you looking confused? Because I am confused. Right, so... No, 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 no. This is the gimmick here. Look at this. Oh, right. I know. What, right. Right. So, so the gimmick is pretty much what you would expect it to be, but there is more to it than that. So whatever you expect it to be, it's going to be that. So that'll do that. Yeah. But then you've also got that. And then you've also got that. Yes, because that. this... You you install this inside your card box. Oh, so, so that is what well, allows it to stack in it. Okay, yeah. All right. I get so that. Yeah. So, so that yeah. inside there. Yeah. Okay, I get that. So that'll go inside the card box. That'll so go the like that. So the vanish of the card. I don't know what that's for, but okay. Um, you do that one. Okay, yeah. I get it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. It's what you would expect. It comes with lots of spare <laughs> stuff to fix it. Alex is looking at us like yeah. nobody's got any idea what we're talking about. No. Well, if you've seen the trailer, you're going to know what it is. Your What's first, the trailer? When you watch the trailer, your first thought will go, oh, that's a so-and-so gimmick and yes it is that um but it's got a few little extras with you to allow you to do stuff with a box that will allow it to stick to the outside of the box and do certain things with for and, silver and screen magic with it as well for silver screen magic oh I, i'd highly recommend oh it. yeah yeah absolutely if you're going to do any any youtube stuff um uh, any facebook stuff that is going to be brilliant uh would i work with this uh, if I had a routine it fitted in with, I, I may I may do that with it, yeah. Um, if not, then, then probably not. You, you, can, you can do what he does on the trailer. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, not, it's, it's not a bad product. Yeah, it will do what it says. It's not the best of trailers. Um, they could have made a trailer a little bit better for it to show the lot, but yeah, yeah, it, it's... it's Is yeah. there going to be any craft in that? No. No, no. Oh, well, the only craft would be is peeling something off and sticking it inside a box. You can do that. Or maybe Even not. you yeah. can do that, Alex. <laughs> yeah. So that's about it. Right, okay, so we're coming towards the end. Um, uh, right. Uh, Martin Hardner, best greetings from Austria. Hello, Martin from Austria. I like our international customers. It's good to know we're, we're, we're getting around. Hmm. So word is spreading. Just saying hello there, and want to mention Dave's Prop Dog um, is the best magic shop. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. Uh, we do appreciate your comments and we appreciate your custom, Martin. Um, thank you guys for, for joining us and thanks to everyone who's, who's watching. You know, as I said at the beginning, without you guys, we're just a couple of idiots sitting there talking to a phone. So, uh, no, we really appreciate you coming along and uh, spending the hour joining us. Um, Did we really speak about it, so. red last week? Red? Oh. Uh, Talk about blue and purple. Oh no, did we? I don't know. Should we talk about it quickly? Let's talk about it. Yeah, if we didn't, yeah. So this is lovely. We got. The, I don't know if we talked about this last week, but I think this has such amazing yeah. potential. So I'm a huge fan of sponge ball routines. So many magicians going, oh, sponge balls. I'm better than that. I, I do better stuff than that. Crap. It's not about you. It's about the reactions. It, it's not about how good you are. It's about what works. And sponge balls work. Sponge balls are classic and magic for a reason. Because whether you're five years old, fifty years old. 90 years old, a bodybuilder, a biker, a school kid, everybody loves loves um, uh, sponge balls. I don't. Yep. Should we do it? Yeah. Or do you want to do it? No, you do it. Yeah, okay. you go for it. Yeah, yeah. Right. I want, I'm uh, going to take. On, hang on. Let's get the camera in close because this is something you want to see close up. Uh, and, uh, in fact, take take it off the tripod just for a second because you might want to sort of come in close to this because there's some lovely moments in this. It's very, very visual. Let's put that down out of the way a bit. Okay. You ready for this? Yeah, everyone. Now, as Dave said, 
Uh, well, we'll talk about it afterwards. Right. Yeah, yeah. Two balls. One goes in my hand. Okay. One goes in your hand. Hold that. Squeeze it. Okay. Don't let me get at it. Now, yes. watch closely. <gasps> now, no. people always ask me how that is done. Okay. Now, the secret to it, just hold on to that again for me. The secret to it is I actually have an invisible syringe. An invisible syringe? An invisible syringe. I don't believe you. Well, this is the visible version. Okay. And what I do is I actually... Coming close. I take the ball out of my hand and inject it. I can feel my hand growing. Into your hand. No How way. How cool is that? Now you can do some really, really nice things with this. Let's get the camera close because you may not see this on the low resolution live video, but what, you, what you've got inside here is a sponge ball that comes up. Well, it's the same material as sponge and it's just lovely. Look at that. It just comes and goes. It's so beautifully visual. Okay. Yeah. Um, come on. So you can do appearances. So if you have sponge in the tube, you can... Yeah, I like the way you kind of make the sponge oh. grow as you do it. It just looks amazing. Do that again. Do that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that again. Right, so. It's lovely, isn't it? It's cool, so isn't visual. it? Yeah. Now, this has got so many magicians talking in the shop this week, and this is why I think it's brilliant. The instructions are in French, which is no bad thing, but you just have to watch and copy. Now, can for me. Loads of little tiny sponge yeah, balls, yeah, yeah. producing like 10 tiny sponge balls from it. Yeah. For me, that's the beauty of it. Yes. If anything that gets a magician thinking about his routine rather than just copying what's done on the download or the, or the DVD, yeah. download in this case, is brilliant. This is not cheap, but for the right people, this is a quality prop to add to a sponge ball routine. But it gets better. Yes, it does get better. It does get better. So There's you more get, with it. There's you get some cool. additional gimmicks as well. So you can. So JR um, is asking if I'm displaying Eastbourne. No, we're not at Eastbourne, uh, JR, unfortunately. You get some nice gimmicks included. So no prizes for guessing how I do this. So I could take the yellow ball, hand that to Dave. You hold on to that for me, Dave. Very good. Now I'm going to take uh, some just from here. No way. Yeah, there's so much you can yeah. do with it. So it's and a half and half, um, yeah, red and yellow. So lots and lots of different it, things. There's just such great potential on that, yeah. yeah. And so, like, yeah. like we were saying, making a, making a load of small balls. I can, I can see this being done on one of those, at the table, you know, almost film with music. Yeah. You see you see these beautiful beautiful acts. Mm -hmm. And Steve Dacry's one, we talked about Spongebob Toolkit a lot yes. in the past. Yes. And his sat at the table with, with spectators it is brilliant. And if you're just sat there, then you go, well, we've got three people here, we'll go a ball for you, a ball for you, a ball for you, and making them appear. There is so much you can do. Hit them with it, what's the price? Uh, 49 99 It's expensive, yeah. It's a lot of money for what it is. But, I mean, that must be uh, a bit of a pain in the backside to make. That's gonna be a pain in the backside to make. Don't forget, also come through Murphy's Magic. So the creator's gotta get this cut, the dealers get their cut, and Murphy's got the cut. The, Manufacturers, get it. everyone gets that cut, so by the time you get it, it's getting a bit more expensive. But I'm, I'm going to buy one. Yeah, it, it, it's worth it. That that alone is worth it. That's fantastic. So with uh, yeah, I, I, well, yeah. I do yeah. my kids' magic every weekend, um, and I set up my show. I'm always there half an hour beforehand. I'm set up with ten minutes before anyone arrives, and I do sponge balls on the on the children, the birthday kid, more often than not, that's there yonks before anyone else. And I, I can add that to, to the show, uh, to my demonstration. Just so clean. So nice, so nice. I just love that growing one. Yeah, just that a little moment there of just growing it. You now, if you've got and someone, if you've got someone as your, as your my, my sponge wall routine starts like this. Do you know what this is? Yeah? If there's something red there, like a pair of church room curtains, quite often the case, or a red t-shirt, yeah. just go to the t-shirt and go, can I just have a little bit of your... Um, Oh, there we go. And then you start. It's so cool. There's so much you can do with it. I yeah. really, really like it. So, you know, if you've had a ball like that, give me a hand. Um, hold it nice and tight in it. Yeah, you can just uh, just say, you know, you've got the, the ball in your hand. It's going to pump a little bit more into it. And all of a sudden, you know, you've got a much bigger one in it. You, there's just different <laughs> things you can really, do with I it. I don't yeah, know yeah. what you put in there. Yeah, it's really good. It's just so much potential for, for routine. How many of those have we got? Uh, two left. 
two left. I bought in right. four or five. One left. So uh, there we go. Right, so anyway, I think we're about ready to go. Uh, oh, Max, hello, Max. Uh, Max was just in the shop uh, uh, a few hours ago. Spongebob trick will be great for Dr. Shipman uh, Halloween special, yes. Um, Britt Cyril, um, uh, when's the next bad product on its review coming? Love those. Um, uh, the, the problem ah. is I'm, I'm starting to try not to get any of the bad stuff in, so we're weeding them out, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Sans Mines are going to have another release next week, which well, they do every week. And we we've, can... we've got a couple of Sans Mines, or a Sans Mine product coming next week that's apparently quite good. Oh, oh is it? Mm. Ooh, controversy. Stay, stay tuned yeah. next week. We do produce the odd good thing. We've got so Jamie, we go. Jamie uh, Paul, and Sans Mines next yeah. Friday. That's exciting. Could we have the best of Sans Mines week? Well, all the best stuff on theirs is sold out. The Vanishing Ring Box is the best thing they sold, and that's been out of stock for, for about a year now, I think. So, uh, other than that, um, best of Sans Mines. Yeah, that might take some thought, but anyway. Right, okay, so anyway, right, time is coming on. I think we're about done now. So, um, yeah, thank you all again for watching us. We really appreciate it. Um, and uh, have a great week, great weekend. I will learn to speak over the weekend, so next Friday I'll, I'll be a little bit better. Um, and if you're gigging, have a good gig. Uh, enjoy the weather. And if you come what? to the shop, I'm in the shop this weekend because Mike is at Eastbourne, so if you're coming this weekend, what you'll time, be seeing me. What time is the shop open at the weekend? Uh, 10 till 5 on Saturday and Sunday, uh, so I will be here. So, uh, yeah, right, thank you all for watching. Have a good weekend and goodbye. See you next week.